people have less engagement in psychotherapy when they have high levels of cognitive impairment. They have more challenges in terms of medication follow through and appointment follow through. They don't remember to write their appointments down or to check their schedule to see that they have an appointment. So I wanted to just uh, make a comment here on the effect of cognitive uh, impairment on medication adherence. It's, and I actually just had this experience with a patient today who was recently hospitalized here. One of the reasons he was hospitalized is that he started taking multiple doses of his medication every day and then ended up having side effects from that and came into the hospital. And so, of course, when he's in the hospital, we spend a lot of time talking with him about how he really needs to take just the dose that we're giving him, that the higher dose is not actually going to help his symptoms, that he's going to end up having side effects from that higher dose. He left the hospital about two weeks ago. I did a follow-up phone call with him today where he told me, guess what? He's been taking the medication multiple times a day, even though it's only been prescribed once a day and has started to have some of the same side effects. And it was just so striking that even though we had spent so much time with him working through all of that, that his cognitive state is such that he either doesn't retain or is unable to uh, utilize that information when he makes choices going forward. And, and it was just a reminder to me of the challenge our patients face, even if everything is being done right, and even if they're on the right medication, just the simple act of remembering, you're only supposed to take this once a day. And if you take it more than that, it's not going to work. You know, even that's really challenging for them. Well, and in, in with, with executive impairment, there's off, often that impulsivity that comes. You feel bad, so you take some pills. And you feel bad again later, and you take some more pills. And, and so it may have also to do with the impulsivity that comes with poor executive functioning. And so whether he remembers or not, he just can't stop himself. And so there are all kinds of things that impair people's ability to follow through with their medication. And cognition is just the piece of it. I want to talk a little bit about the reward pathways in schizophrenia. Now, the reward pathways sort of start with dopamine that comes from the ventral tegmental area and goes into the, the limbic region of the brain. And this helps to control reward processing and especially dopamine release in the nucleus accumbens in the kind of cells that we call um, medium spiny neurons, right? There's a lot of dopamine functioning that's involved, but it also interacts with glutamatergic functioning in the brain. And this balance between dopamine and glutamatergic function where, you know, you have a dysfunction of dopamine in the striatum and then the glutamatergic circuits that are in the cortex and the hippocampus and the whole integration of all of that seems to be implicated in the deficient reward processing that people have when they have schizophrenia. Things just don't seem like they're going to be worth the effort that they put forth to do it. And so we really need to understand these circuits better and how we can intervene to help people to have more fulfilling lives.